Hello, my beautiful love bugs, and welcome back to another video in my series, What's in a Name, where we're going through the different orders of insects and talking about where they get their name from, because this can help you usually with some identification features to help you identify the group as a whole when you're out in the field, except for today. <laughs> Today, we are talking about the order of the cockroaches and termites. That's right, surprise! Termites are just the social cockroaches. And we'll talk about why that happened in a second, but let's get through the cockroachy kind of cockroaches first. The order of cockroaches and termites is Blattodia. Sometimes in some old texts, you'll see the name Blataria instead, but it's referring to the same order. The reason why this name isn't particularly helpful to give you any identification features in field is because Odia comes from the Greek Eidos, which means type, shape, and Blata is Latin for cockroach. So this whole order is like the cockroachy looking things, <laughs> which like using the definition to define the thing is not very helpful. Technically, blatta means an insect that shuns away from light, but in most contexts, it's referring to cockroaches. Some historical contexts is referring to moths because they're like butterflies that fly around at night. But if you're looking at any modern entomological terminology, blatta is referring to cockroaches. This name is so important that you see it all the way through the order of the cockroaches. Blattidae, which contains the American cockroaches, and in Blattidae, that family, there's a genus, blatta. So, you know, the most cockroachy of all the cockroaches, I suppose. Because the name doesn't really give you that many good features to identify with, <laughs> Here are some ID features of cockroaches. They look really leathery. Some of them have wings and some of them don't, but the ones that do have wings are really leathery. And my favorite meme, everyone's gangster until the cockroach flies. They tend to be oval shaped and the head is covered by the first segment of the thorax and this structure is called a pronotum. And so you can really only see like the top of the thorax and these two little antennae sticking out from it or actually quite large antennae sticking out from underneath it. I think and aside from being pests, part of the reason why people hate cockroaches is just that you can't see their face and their eyes. They have multi-segmented circe, which are the two little appendages on the back end of the cockroach. And this can be really important when you're trying to do further identifications within the cockroach group and in some cases can be a sex determining characteristic because some male cockroaches have asymmetrical circe. They have really spiny thick legs and those spiny thick legs on, on their feet, they have these little pads that help them stick to different surfaces. And cockroaches lay an egg case called an uathika. Cockroaches are supposed to be living outside. They're supposed to be in tree bark and under logs and under leaves and under rocks. And those thick legs help push them through substrate. The little pads help them cling on to things. They're flattened and a little bit leathery armored texture helps protect them against like bumps and scrapes. And that's why their pronotum also covers their head because it protects the head from bumping into things. Unfortunately, all of these adaptations help them crawl around your cabinets at night too. While cockroaches are most known for being pests, only a handful of species are actually pest species. There's over 4,600 species of cockroach and many of them are really beautiful. One of my favorites is a bioluminescent cockroach that to me looks like a heartless from Kingdom Hearts. Now we're gonna talk about termites, how they got slurped into the cockroaches and why they got slurped into the cockroaches. Termites used to be their own order. So if you see Isoptera around, especially in older literature, that means termites. The old order name Isoptera still exists, but now it has been reduced to an infraorder within Blattodia. 
Isoptera actually did help you identify the insect. It means same wing, and that is because the termites have four wings that all basically look the same and are kind of normal membranous wings like you would expect. One fun fact about the wings of termites is that they're perforated along the edge. So if you tap, like just tap, just touch lightly the wings, they'll break off. And that's because termites live underground and once you have mated, only the reproductives have wings. So once you've mated, you need to get underground and you need to start making babies and wings would get damaged underground and you're not gonna fly away anyway, so it doesn't really matter. The super family of termites is termite toidae and termite and termite toidae both have the Latin root, which is termes, which means woodworm or white ant. While a lot of people think that termites and ants are closely related, they actually have about 110 million years separating the two groups. So it's kind of like one of like when you're watching a movie and like that notice comes up and it says all depictions of fictional characters that may look like or may refer to or have likeness to a real person or a real place or like a real event is coincidental. It's kind of the same thing. Termites and ants just have similar subterranean lifestyles that they both independently derived this lifestyle. And so their body form reflects that kind of lifestyle. And so they look superficially similar, but that is because of how they interact with the environment. Some identification features for termites are that they're white, Usually, they usually don't have any eyes. They're completely blind. There's like nothing left on them. They have maniliform antennae, which means that it looks like there's beads on a string and that's the antennae that they have. Most importantly, they're eusocial. So they have a caste system. So the workers, the soldiers look different from each other and those look different from the reproductives, which are winged, which is where you got Isoptera from in the first place. And then you have the queen and the king. This is another way in which they're different from ants is that they have both a queen and a king that live inside the termite mound. And fun fact, one of our longest lived insects, 45 years, is a termite queen. Now, how did we get termites to be part of cockroaches? Back in the day, when we were trying to determine different groups of insects, because humans love putting things in boxes, we would only use morphology. So how the insect looked and specific features, and if we thought that those features were specifically derived from one lineage. However, as I just mentioned, between ants and termites, you can have similar features develop because you have similar lifestyles, or you can have divergent features appear because you have diversified li lifestyles. When our genetic testing, A, got good enough that we could run things besides humans and mammals, and two, became cheap enough, which is really the puzzle piece here, we could start mixing genetic data along with morphological data into our models to be able to better determine how these different insects are related, which is why we see so much turmoil and change in insects. If you've seen my Hemiptera video, you'll see how a lot of that has gotten changed. So when we were running phylogenetic models, not just with morphological data, but also genetic data, termites would always pop out in the middle of the cockroach lineage, which means that they weren't separate. They weren't coming out next to the cockroach lineage. They were coming out directly in the middle. And we do have one family of cockroaches, which is pretty weird, which we think is the closest relative to the termites. And they have some pretty striking similar similarities. So at this point, I messed up the pronunciation of some of the important genera. <laughs> Dyslexia strikes again. So I recorded the correct pronunciation over it. So when the audio changes briefly, you know what happened. Lol. This one family that helps illuminate this relationship between termites and cockroaches is the family Cryptocercidae. In it, a genus Cryptocercus. Now this cockroach is weird for cockroaches. 
It eats wood, for one, like termites do. Eating wood is very difficult. Wood is very, very hard to digest and break down, and you often need specialized bacteria to even make it a possibility. So the fact that you have wood-eating cockroaches and wood-eating termites, there's a little bit of a link there, but that's not all. Cryptocercus also has social behavior, including grooming. Juvenile Cryptocercus cockroaches groom each other and groom the adults. While there is evidence that some cockroaches are social, where the, you know, they all live together, if they're touching each other, then they tend to reproduce better, <laughs> but they don't have a complicated grooming behavior like the Cryptocercus do. And of course, termites are really extreme examples of this sociality. Finally, Cryptocercus cockroaches and very primitive termites, which are termites that are at the base of the lineage that is termites, so the ones that are most closely related to these cryptocircus cockroaches. These are Mastotermes darwiniensis. And both of these have a couple more, more striking similarities. One is that they both share a segmental origin for specific female reproductive structures. And two, like I mentioned earlier, cockroaches produce uathika or these egg cases, and both these primitive termites and the cryptocercus cockroaches produce kind of weird uathika. They're different and distinct from other cockroaches. And these were all the pieces of the puzzle that basically said, yeah, termites are just weird, eusocial cockroaches that kind of did their own thing, but they do belong together. And so here you have it. Blattodia includes both the cockroachy looking things and also the termites. I hope that you really enjoyed today's what's in a name video because one, I think the fact that we just literally called the order cockroaches is hilarious to me, but also shows you how science is always changing and how hypotheses are always evolving, and especially in insects, how taxonomy is always changing. I will see you soon for another video in this series. Bye!